Thank you, guys. Especially Alan. How many times can you make a champion spin and still keep it interesting? Katarina's debut was all the way back in set one, and it was a bit like watching a toddler learn to walk. It was adorable, but my god, it was full of face plants. There was a time that if you stacked too much mana on her, at the start of the round, she would spin across the map like a Beyblade instead of waiting until she landed. Riot's attempts to fix this were experimental. Sometimes she'd get to the other side of the board and then just spin, even if there was nothing there. As if she was trying to figure out if she was just in fact a fidget spinner. And for an assassin that splashed Imperial, a trait that gave you a shitload of damage, she was the queen of doing absolutely nothing. And yet you couldn't help but laugh at how consistently she failed. She ended up as a glorified trait bot for Ranger and Cassidy, who were out there living their best lives while Katarina was still trying to figure out what game she was in. She did have one great quality though. Katarina, in every iteration, has always applied healing reduction, and in set one at the start, applied 100%, which is kinda nuts. After the disaster of set one, Riot benched Katarina until set four, probably hoping would forget about the whole spinning fiasco. When she returned, she brought the Warlord of Fortune traits with her. And Fortune is basically Riot's way of saying, hey, we know you like gambling, so let's make it official. It was the perfect trait for people like me who like to live on the edge and praying that their 12 lost streak would finally pay off with some god tier loot, only to be greeted by what is known as the mop box cash out. Katarina, now a warlord, which is a trait that gave you extra stats for winning, was surprisingly strong at first. You could see the potential, but warlord was just getting started. As the set progressed, she kind of faded into the background because the other champions were a little bit more overbearing. See my video about Warwick for that one. And outside of some high roll fortune games, playing her felt like ordering a steak at a salad house. Sure, it's an option but why would you? And then came 4.5, where Katarina transformed into God Cat. It's like she did a CLG and went to a boot camp and this time actually came back stronger. You could slap her into almost any comp, fortunes, assassins, warlords, you name it, and she'd carry you through the mid game like a champ. And if you three starred her, she could easily take over a game. Warlords was suddenly the hot new thing, and once those annoying one cost units got a little bit nerfed, Katarina was like, ah, my time has come. But you played her alongside Darius, and you just had so many options to play Fortune. Or you played her alongside the other assassins, and hey, guess what? <laughs> You're amazing. It was just, the sky was the limit for 4.5 Katarina. But it's not my favorite iteration of Katarina. And do you know what my favorite thing is? When you click that like button. That makes me feel very happy. Set 5 gave us a Katarina that was all about style and flair. Her skin was so gorgeous it was almost distracting. You'd watch her toss a cue and dash and for a moment there you'd think you were back in your League of Legends days contemplating how you could have gone pro if only you'd started earlier. Oh. She had her moments of brilliance, especially when paired with Viego, to fill out that assassin comp, but the real secret sauce was playing Coven with Katarina. That three-piece trait turned into a three-star, three-cost monster, and when it worked, it was like watching a symphony play out perfectly. This was Katarina at her most elegant. And then she disappears again for 5.5, because that's what happens, and she comes back again for set 6. And this is what is known as the Spencer comp era, named after the TFT streamer Spencer. And he was the one that made Katarina popular in set 6, and I'm pretty sure at that point in time he was everyone's least favourite person in the world. Two cost rerolls are like that one karaoke song that everyone sings because it's easy, not because it's good. Sure it's fun, but it was also kind of cringe. So Katarina was basically her set 5 self, but with less flair, no bounces, no final flourish, just a straightforward dash to the first this Juno, but that was enough to make her a menace in a reroll assassin comp and dominate the meta until Riot finally decided to shake things up in 6.5 because the other Academia units, except for Yone, were about as interesting as a soggy sandwich and no wonder they had to be removed. And I think at this point Riot were trying their best to move away from any assassin comp. Set 6 probably freaked them out a little bit and they're thinking, hmm, we need a different thing to do. Set 9 was a weird one for Katarina, because for the first time, she wasn't an assassin. She was a rogue, which is Riot's attempt at creating an assassin-like trait without the actual assassin part. Rogue's got an edge of night effect and dashed to the back line at half health, which sounds cool on paper, but in practice, let's just say it had its moments. The trait was bugged 
to high heaven, especially in PvE, but that didn't stop Gatorina from dominating in the meta. Her new animation, where she threw three daggers and dashed around like she was trying to escape, was, was kind of cool. Your reroll Noxus, a trait that got better by killing other units, which Katarina excelled at, and stack as many rogues as you could, and pray for a rogue emblem just to toss it on a Darius. It was chaotic, it was buggy, and it was beautiful. In 9.5, Ionia had been a problem, so Zed swapped out for Rogue, and Kiana stepped in, bringing with her Ixtal, or Ixtal. And what they were were essentially set to hexes that gave small bonuses to units placed on them. And with Katarina still being the queen of reroll Noxus, at least at the beginning, now you had a little bit more flexibility. It wasn't just Noxus. Now you could play some Ixtal. And that's always a good thing. Kiana added a little variation, but let's not kid ourselves. The real star of the show was actually Samira with a blue buff. <laughs> Why would you play Katarina when you could play Samira with a blue buff? And this is the beginning of her descent from top tier to just another option. And then we had set 10. And Katarina, she did have a moment to shine. There was an insane build with double Hodge dual gauntlet, or just Hodge and dual gauntlet with crowd diver. And this popped off for a little while, but it wasn't the main thing that most people associate with set 10. For the most part, people think of set 10 as country, where Ergot and Samira did a lot of the heavy lifting. And Katarina's three dagger toss was back, but this time she was a ranged unit, which felt more like watching Billy Joel do his country music album with Nora Jones. It was interesting, but not really what you signed up for. And Crowddiver was Riot's latest attempt at assassin-like traits, but let's be honest, it felt more like an assassin cosplay. I mean, it had its moments, but it wasn't like an assassin-assassin trait. And now we arrive at set 12, where Katarina is back to her roots, spinning to win just like the good old days, except this time, it seems Riot has actually finally figured out how to make her work without all of the bugs and frustration. Her current iteration is amazing, her ultimate is unstoppable, she gets resets, and it's everything you could ever ask for in a Katarina, except for she's still struggling to find her place in the meta. It's like Riot finally nailed the mechanics, but forgot to tell us whether she's supposed to be an assassin, a bruiser, or something else entirely. Do you play her as a glass cannon, or do you try to play her as a bruiser and hope for the best? Well, people are still figuring that one out, aren't they? But one thing's for sure, at some point, somebody will figure it out just as Riot buffs her, and then we'll all be sitting there going, ah, sh do you remember the good old days when Katarina was just that bugged out spinning champion from set one? So where does that leave us? Katarina's journey through TFT has been a roller coaster of spinning successes and dizzying failures. She's been bugged, she's been buffed, she's been nerfed and everything in between. But one thing's for sure, I give her a fidget spinner out of a Beyblade. <laughs>